Hey, y'all ready for a studio tour? Come on in. All right, so I've been here at Canopy since 2013. Uh, my studio's always been in the back. It's down the hallway behind the big medium. The studio's right over here. We just have to get past this uh, 2,000 pounds of clay. If anyone wants to help me unload it, they're 50 pound boxes. It's a wonderful workout, but that's a whole lot of future work ready to be made. Oh, hey there. Welcome, this is the front room, this is the everything room. This is showroom, this is office, this is packing, this is shipping, this is logistics, it's storage. Everything that happens after the studio process is happening in here, and it's how I'm getting the work out to you both online and on the computer, and in real life, packing it up and getting it out the door with uh, UPS. Hi, we're still in the front room. If you've been here during East, you know this room. It is where we're usually throwing down with a big party. We've got drinks, we've got loud music. My friend Floyd is here bartending and we're donating his tips and a portion of my sales to different nonprofits in town. Things like Andy Roddick Foundation and their after school program, Austin Bat Cave and their writing workshops and Big Medium, which is the org that puts this tour up together and has for years and is the, the backbone of the creative community in this city. Austin's been really, really good to me. I try to use any opportunity I have to give back. And I'm thankful for your support of my work because that helps me do that. All right, so this is cool. Um, I wanna show you my whips. Are you ready? Right here, this guy, this is the Soldner. It's a 1998 Soldner P100. It can center 100 pounds of clay. This, this is where I throw everything. Every hand thrown limited edition, all the super lux, super dope pieces, they're coming off of this wheel. Um, my trimming setup, this here, I bought this wheel when I was in college. This is a 1994 Brent CXC, still getting used. It's awesome. Um, and I do a lot of trimming of our slip cast work here. And this mess here is where I'm trimming plates and bowls and anything that needs to have a, a traditional turned foot on it. Um, this is probably the newest wheel I have. This beautiful, magnificent, old monster of a machine is my 1984 Ratcliffe Jiggering Machine. It is from Stoke-on-Trent in England. It's how I make my dinnerware, um, using a series of molds and these um, profiles to compress and push the clay into the mold. It's a way of making the dinnerware to keep it repetitive. Um, so the sizes match and um, to make them a lot faster than hand throwing them. Still a lot of steps in the process, still um, super labor, in labor intensive, but it, uh, it's a pretty dope way to make pots. Friends, I would love to show you the slip casting area. Won't you join me? Welcome. All right, you've seen the wheels, you've seen the jiggering machine. Another way to make pots is slip casting. And with slip casting, you take a plaster mold and you fill that with liquid clay. That liquid clay begins to dry as the plaster starts soaking up the moisture from the slip. And what's left behind is the piece itself. When it's the wall is the thickness that you want, you pour it out, you clean it up, and you decorate it just like any other piece made here in the studio, and it is how I make things like the Lexington cup, the Lexington mug, Gramercy vases, all sorts of fun stuff. It comes from here and it goes in the kiln, gets shiny, gets ready, bring it home, enjoy it. Trade secret, dry cleaning plastic is one of the most important tools that I have here in the studio. It allows me to control the drying. When I put a handle on a piece, when I decorate a piece, when I trim a piece, all happens at different stages. And that plastic allows me to control how quickly or how slowly the piece is drying. If you've ever met me before, if you've ever traveled with me, if you've ever cooked with me, you might not be surprised to learn that I have some control issues. So Bisquare, my least favorite moment. This has been fired once. It's got no life to it. It feels dead. It looks chalky. I hate it. I'm trying to get it out of this process as quickly as possible. I don't want to be spending time in this part of the process. Um, again, that freshly thrown pot, um, full of life, full of energy, super cheesy stuff that I'm saying here, but it, 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 it's how I feel. 
that's the moment that the piece is living its most for me. Every step, I am trying to get it back to that moment. So I'm basically working backwards, I guess. Try, I, I don't even know. Anyways, when I get it out of the kiln, and that piece is shiny because it's got that glaze, and I've added that 2300 degrees of heat, and it's got this energy again, that is the moment that it is as close to the moment I've made it. It's the moment I'm searching for. It's when you get to bring it home also. That shiny object that I'm chasing is coming out of the kiln and it's hopefully bringing you um, some enjoyment um, in your meals, on your table. That, that's the point of all of this. These are the stacks of bisqueware. Um, here's the glaze. Come on over, I wanna show you the glaze. We're gonna mix this up and then we're gonna glaze some stuff. Cool? All right. Before we use a glaze, we have to mix a glaze up. But, uh, as my good friend Mick Dundee would say, that's not a glaze mixer. This is a glaze mixer. We've got three kilns. This is the biggest. I am not going to show you this right now, but we're going to use some TV magic and I will show you um, another cut. Uh, it's a three day cycle. So I load it, I fire it, it cools day two, and then I open the work on day three. I also have two smaller kilns. Um, do my bisque firing. Sometimes I'll do glaze firings in here also. Kiln names. <clears throat> Excuse me. This is Liam. This is Noel. And this is Jarvis. If you are a fan of 90s British music, you will get this. Um, Liam never shows up to work. Noel always delivers. Jarvis is the most brilliant, brilliant, brilliant one in the game. All right, got it? Yeah. Are we rolling? Mm -hmm. We're rolling? Really? Okay, cool. Um, we're walking. We're walking. That concludes this edition of the Austin Studio Tour 2020 from Keith Krieger Studios. Thank you for joining me. Thanks for following along. I hope it was fun. I hope it was interesting. I hope maybe you learned something about my work, learned something about ceramics in general. Um, most importantly, I wanna say thank you. Thank you for following along. Thank you for supporting my work. I know a lot of you have my work at home and a lot of you are thinking of bringing it home. It really does mean the world to me. This room is where I have ideas and I turn those ideas into objects, but those objects aren't really living up to their potential until they're in your homes, until you're sharing a meal with your friends and family. And that is why I do what I do and I cannot do that without you. So thank you. Thanks for following along. Check out KeithKrieger.com. All of my new work is there. A lot of one-of-a-kind stuff I've been making for the past few months. I'm super excited about these pieces. I've got curbside pickup if you live here in Austin. And we're shipping, obviously, if you live further afield. Thanks again for following. Talk to you all soon. Sorry, I just pressed stop.